Hello, hello. How are you today? This is Hina from Team Tess, wishing you a happy Monday. How are you, friends? Well, it was a lovely weekend indeed, because Kalyani Ma'am finally unveiled her Encyclopedia of the Literatures of America, Volume 1. I can't imagine the fruit of her labor for two decades, more than that. And finally, the first volume is out. Second will come out also. And if you haven't seen the video, that video where ma'am actually gave that book as a priceless possession to her father, dedicated it to him, it was a moment to cherish, right? So if you want your own copy of Literatures of America Encyclopedia, you can contact us on this number, 93878-39871. And here I am again, discussing the question answers for the gate examination. And I have already told you, Tess conducts an online quiz program, an online course, and also we have our own hard copy of practice test questions for gate any information, you can call us on the same number, okay? Five question answers, explanation behind every answer, I shall give you here. Let's begin with question number one from Cultural Studies. Which of the following is a memoir by Stuart Hall? Okay, memoir by Stuart Hall. Your options are A, The Hard Road to Renewal. B, Questions of Cultural Identity. C, Familiar Stranger, A Life Between Two Islands, or D, Resistance Through Rituals. What is it? <clears throat> Memoir by Stuart Hall, a Jamaican-British sociologist. The answer is C, Familiar Stranger, A Life Between Two Islands. Well, in this memoir, Stuart Hall has spoken about his childhood days, how he grew up in Kingston, Jamaica, which was then a British colony, how he felt uncomfortable in his own home because of two different categories of people there. You know, there was this elite brown skinned people. And on the other side, there was this poor black peasantry who were otherwise poor, but they were very rich in their culture, history and music. And finally, the violence and the rebellion of this black peasantry. And <clears throat> It's, it's a lovely memoir. After this, he actually speaks about his Oxford University days where he met another Caribbean writers like George Lamming, V.S. Naipaul, etc. Right? Good enough. Can we move on to question number two? Here it is. Which of these are Aristotle's views on tragedy? Listen to the options carefully. I shall explain in the options itself. Your options are A. According to Aristotle, tragedy has six parts. Absolutely correct. It does have six parts. Which ones are these? It is PCD, TSM. So it is plot, character, diction, thought, spectacle, and melody. So option A is correct. B, the most important part of a tragedy is diction. No, 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 no. The most important part of tragedy is plot, right? So B is wrong. <clears throat> C, tragedy is superior to epic. Yes, it is. And D, aim of tragedy is not to portray character, but to show action. Even this is correct. So the right answer is A, C, and D are correct. Only B is not correct. Perfect. Did you get it? Can we move on to question number three? Romantic period. Identify the poems by William Wordsworth. Your options are A, my heart leaps up. B, the tables turned. C, England 1819. Or D, two daffodils. Poems by William Wordsworth. You know them. Yes, you do. The correct options are A and B. My heart leaps up and the tables turned. These are by Wordsworth. While you know this, England 1819 is a poem by P.B. Shelley. While two daffodils is by Robert Herrick. And do you remember who launched the romantic period in English literature? It was actually Wordsworth and Coleridge together when they published lyrical ballets in collaboration, right? So can we move on? Yes, we can. Here it is, question number four, American literature. <clears throat> 
Which of the following songs does Blanche sing while taking bath in a streetcar named Desire? The song that Blanche sings while taking a bath in this novel by Tennessee Williams, A Streetcar Named Desire. Your options of the songs are A, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, B, Hallelujah, C, Desire, or D, It's Only a Paper Moon. <clears throat> Winter season. <laughs> Throat not well. Okay, tell me, which is the correct option? Yes, it is. Option D, it's only a paper moon. Can we talk a little bit about this revolutionary novel? You know, the theme of this novel was desire and destruction, sexuality and violence. America was taken aback because it was too much of a frank novel, spoke of male dominance. It basically, this novel has four major characters, okay? So there's Blanche, who is that Southern belle, then Blanche's sister is Stella. Stella's husband is Stanley, who is very dominating. <clears throat> Stanley's friend is Mitch, okay? And it talks of a clash between Blanche and Stanley, which ends up in Stanley actually raping Blanche and Stella denying the fact. Stella does not believe Blanche that her husband can do something so improper, like this and finally she transfers Blanche to a mental institution okay you should read it it's absolutely revolutionary okay and we move on to the last question of the day poetic devices very interesting I like it which of these is correctly matched with the literary device your options are a war is peace it's a paradox b Cold fire is oxymoron. C, O Rose, thou art sick, is ambiguity. Or D, not waving, but drowning, it's an irony. Are all these correct? Yes, they are. A, B, C, D, all are correct. Can I tell you a little bit about it? You will really find it interesting. Let's, let me tell you. Paradox, we know, it is an absurd, contradictory statement. But when you investigate, that statement might be true. Now, for example, I am nobody. That's a paradox. War is peace. That's a paradox. Less is more is a paradox. Okay? B, oxymoron. In oxymoron, two opposite or contradictory words are side by side or placed together. Now, for example, cold fire, oxymoron. Then uh, seriously funny, oxymoron. Pretty ugly, oxymoron. C, ambiguity. What is ambiguity? When one statement can be interpreted in more than one way. I am the reader or the listener. I can interpret a line in more than one way. Now, I'll give you a very easy example. It says in ambiguity, a good life depends on the liver. Here I can interpret the liver as the organ of the body, obviously very vital if you want to have a healthy life, or the liver can also be a living person. So a good life depends on the liver is an ambiguous statement. Similarly, oh Rose, thou heart sick. Well, this is a poem by William Blake. The name of the poem is the sick rose. So this line is ambiguous. I can have multiple meanings from this line, okay? And D is irony. What is an ironic statement? When what I say is absolutely different from what I mean. Now, for example, I'm very unwell. And you ask me, how are you, Hina? I say, oh, I'm absolutely gorgeous. I'm awesome. I'm in the peak of my health. That's an ironic statement, okay? Now, if someone is looking really bad and you, you know, she asks you, how do I look today? And you say, you look like a princess. That's again an ironic statement. So here, not waving, but drowning. Not waving, but drowning. That's an ironic statement. Again, we can have different type of ironies, different type of ambiguities, but that I will not discuss right now. This will be enough. This will suffice. And with this, we end up today's session of question answers. 
I hope you loved it. I will be back again soon with more such question answers. And if you like my video, if you want to have your own copy of such question answers for GATE, or if you want to have an online course with us, you can contact Tess on the number 93878-39871. Thank you so much. It was lovely being with you. Bye. Have a great time.